good morning everybody from right beside that water tower we're in Brainerd Minnesota I'm gonna run over to Pillager Minnesota which is the next town to the west from here I'm gonna grab some lumber throw it on my empty step deck behind me tie it down and go home You ready for this? Oh, I just tied down my load. And there it is. Put 46,000 pounds of wood. And it's hardwood too. Like It's kind of jagged, got sharp edges. So I put corner protectors. I don't usually put corner protectors on lumber loads, but I was kind of worried about these straps uh, or this wood eating through my straps, even though I'm not going too far. By the looks of it, I'm just taking this to our yard and we're gonna have a city guy deliver it into Winnipeg on Monday. We'll see if the plan changes. I don't mind delivering it, but we have other plans for me uh, next week. Gotta go home for a couple of days first. Well, what next week worry about next week, right? Let's finish up this week. This is the lakes of Detroit. Or Detroit Lakes, however you wanna pronounce it. Minnesota. I still haven't figured out why. You may have told me in the comment section last time, maybe I missed that one. I go through the comments every day. But uh, why they call it Detroit Lakes if it's in Minnesota? Why isn't it called Minnesota Lakes or like Minneapolis Lakes? Why is it Detroit Lakes? And where are the lakes? I don't see any lakes around here. I'm sure they're here. So the lumber I've got on my trailer is being delivered uh, next week. Someone else will be delivering it for me, I just confirmed it. So I'll bring it to our yard and leave it there for whoever uh, is going to take care of that. I've got to grab an empty step and head over to Winnipeg. We're going to be going up north next week really far north, further north yet than I've ever been. I keep breaking my own records. They keep sending me further and further north, like edging me towards the ice roads. I, I know their plan, they're edging me closer and closer, closer, all of a sudden they're gonna be like, oh come on, it's just a little further, it's just down the ice. <laughs> I've already told them, Old Blue is not going on the ice roads. Old Blue is not going on those winter roads. Those roads destroy, well, they can destroy trucks, if you're not careful. They're very rough. And uh, Old Blue is way too pretty to go up there. So no ice roads, no winter roads, but we're going pretty much to the end of the road. Remember last time we went up north, uh, we went across on that ferry to, uh, what, what, what was that uh, reserve called again? Fort something? Fort, uh, Fort Nelson? No. Forget right now. Oh yeah, we took the ferry across. Remember we got stranded there for a couple of days. We're going further north than that. Norther. So that should be interesting. They talked me into it, twisted my arm with a few nickels. They were pretty shiny, so I said, okay. Okay, for a couple of shiny nickels, we'll go up there. I'm gonna look at the forecast though first. I don't wanna get stranded up there again.
We're on US Highway 10. We're gonna meet up with Interstate 29 in Fargo. I'm gonna go to the Blue Beacon and see if there's a long lineup. If there's not too long of a lineup, we're gonna get in line and wash Old Blue. If there's too long of a lineup, I'm just gonna say, nah, never mind, and just go home and wash it myself at the shop. I just, I know I don't do as good of a job, but hey, when I do it, it is a lot cheaper. There's that. But you get what you pay for. If you pay nothing for it and do it yourself, it's not done as good. <laughs> Come on, old blue. Pull me home. Come on. We're pretty heavy. Definitely not the heaviest we've ever been, but we're probably sitting at about eh, just under 80,000 pounds. And I never go all out either. Like I never floor it. I want this engine to last a long time yet. We're getting close to three million kilometers or two million miles on this truck. And I wanna get it to uh, five million kilometers or three million miles and then make my decision, which will probably be to completely overhaul it, rebuild the engine and completely like paint everything, take everything off the frame, sandblast and paint the frame, paint the truck, stretch the frame out about 24 inches. And we'll have a brand new truck again, right? That's what I'm thinking. But for now, we're just gonna get some money put in the bank. We've got a family to think of at home. I can't go blowing all my money on fancy shiny things for the truck, though I'd love to. <coughs> gotta make sure we got a roof over our heads, food on our plates. And money in the bank for if anything ever, uh, you know, suddenly goes downhill. Or if, you know, they decide to shut the world down again for a cold. You know, it's, uh, if that happens, got to make sure that we're not going to get ourselves in, like, trouble and need food and stuff, right? So once I have a comfortable big old nest egg in the bank somewhere, then we'll start pouring money into Old Blue. For now, we're just gonna keep doing the little things, you know? trucks in line that's okay but if there's like a long lineup no thank you I want to go home oh 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 I'm gonna stop here for this guy you're welcome these guys in front of me are in no rush Turn right on 49th Street South. Oh, and this guy's trying to come out the entrance. That's another reason. Uh, the exit's on the other side there, Volvo. This is the entrance. there's a huge long lineup or not. 
They sort of have it snaking around there. Okay. Oh yeah, there's a quite a lineup. Oh yeah. Yeah, long lineup. Okay, nope. No thank you. I'm not staying here for an hour waiting for a truck wash. That's too bad. Oh well. I kind of figured there would be a long lineup today. It's a Friday when I'm filming this. The weather's nice, the sun's out. Not surprised that there's a big long lineup. Not a problem, I can do it myself. It's just not gonna be done quite as good, but who knows? If I had the time, I could do it even better. So when I go home, uh, I don't usually have a lot of time. There's a lot of other things I need to get done. North Dakota at the Loves. Gonna quickly fill up the tanks. They're ready to go for next week. And then we'll head home. One more stop. Fuel here is $4.45 US per US gallon. take uh, 130 gallons or something. Beautiful. 
While the fuel price gap has definitely been closing between Canada and the United States, between Manitoba and North Dakota. Uh, in Manitoba, just up the road, in St. Agath, fuel at the Flying J is $1.779 per liter, Canadian. Here, with the conversion rate, from $4.449 44, USD per US gallon, that equals $1.57.4 per liter Canadian. So that's a difference of 20 and a half cents per liter from here to Canada. Remember it was as high as a 50 cent gap per liter that you would save fueling in the US. What was that last month? Now I'm saving 20 and a half cents. Let's just round it up to 21 cents. Saving 21 cents per liter. I bought 560 liters today. So 21 cents times, well, you know, let's stick with 21 and a half cents since if, if half a cent is a thing times 560 liters I saved hundred and fourteen dollars and eighty cents today So it's not like I'm saving three hundred dollars a tank anymore. So the gap is closing. That's good it's Still considerably cheaper here in the US had I just driven an hour up the road I would have had to spend an extra hundred and fourteen dollars for the same amount of fuel Some people have even said it's the exact same fuel it comes from the same refinery Crazy, right? Okay, let's go home. Grab myself a couple of hot dogs. Gonna be getting home kind of late. So Britt has already made herself supper, I'm sure. So I'll have supper on the road. Probably gonna be home close to like 10 o'clock. We'll see how fast I can get uh, Old Blue parked. not taking everything home that I usually do. I usually wash everything, like the floor towels, bedding. This week, I'm just taking just the necessities home. I just want to get home. It's late already. It's probably about 11 o'clock. Oh, about 10.30. I wanted to be home a lot earlier, but it is what it is. And uh, what it is, is trucking. That's what it is. Oh, boo, you did good. You had a good week. Yeah, I had fun too. Hope you have a good weekend. Gonna have to get you some new shoes soon. Shoes are getting a little bit worn. Hey, eh? you like some new shoes? Yeah, me too. I'd, uh, I'm hoping to get new tires on it this fall, like I've been saying. Quite expensive though. I have two already uh, behind the bar. I just got to get six more. And these tires are not cheap. They're about $1,000 each. And I need six more of them. And not only that, I also need new steers this fall as well. So all new shoes. And that's... Well, nowadays price of tires have gone up so much. I mean, they'll probably be under $1,000 each. I still haven't gotten the invoice from those two tires. It's taken forever to process it through the account. I keep calling and saying, hey, what's, what's, what's going on here? But <laughs> the final price, I mean, I know it's about $1,000 a tire. Uh, so that'd be what? $8,000 back here plus $1,000 each up there. About $10,000 worth of rubber on this truck this year. And I'm gonna have to set up some kind of like Trucker Josh fund. I need tires. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Uh, everybody's got the same expenses as me. I'm not special. I just let you know what they are because those of you who don't drive truck probably don't realize how expensive it is to run these things. So I like to let you know it's expensive. It's expensive. It's about as expensive as you would think it would be, plus twice that. But boy, is it fun.